uh, I believe Commissioner Pappas, you're connected, right? I am, thank you. Okay, um, Commissioner Moriarty is not gonna be here, so I think everyone is here. So why don't we call the meeting of the Board of Public Works to order. As chair of the Board of Public Works, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no specific uh, uh, location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are first providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom through the city's IT department for this electronic meeting. To access Zoom, please refer to the agenda or to the city's website for the meeting link. To join by phone, dial 1-929-436-2866. The meeting ID is 975-7183-9106. And the password is 798-534. The public may also view this meeting on Comcast channel 16. Second, providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the City of Nashua's website at www.nashuanh.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and at the Department of Public Works Administration Building at 9 Riverside Drive. Third, providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. Fourth, adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the phone number mentioned that I mentioned before, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, why they are not physically present for the meeting, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during the meeting, which is required under the right to know law. And who is going to call the roll? It will it be Diane? Yes. Ms. Thibodeau, could you please uh, call the roll? Mayor Dantas. I'm here, I'm socially distanced uh, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and I'm uh, in the living room by myself. Commissioner Tease. You're muted. Commissioner Tease. He's not muted. He appears to be here, but he we can't hear him. So why don't we go on to uh, with the roll call and hopefully he can get connected. Mr. Pappas. I'm here. I'm in I'm in in my house by myself and I am not at the meeting due to the COVID-19 epidemic and um, or pandemic and um, pursuant to the governor's orders. Now, Commissioner Teeds, have you been able to connect yet? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm on my phone, so there's a separate um, connection as well, but I'm present. I'm uh, attending remotely because of the governor's order relating to the pandemic. I'm in my home in a room by myself, although there are other people home with me. All right, great. So we have uh, three members present. Kevin Moriarty, or Commissioner Moriarty is not able to be present. Commissioner Shoneman? 
Pardon? Oh, I'm here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm attending remotely due to the governor, governor's emergency order for the COVID-19 pandemic, and I'm alone in this room in my house. Uh, first, we have the motion to uh, approve the agenda as presented. Commissioner Tees. Did you ask for me to approve it, Mr. Mayor? I did call on you in the hopes that you would make that motion. Sure. Uh, I approve, uh, move to approve the agenda as presented. Any discussion? Could you please call the roll? Mayor Dantes? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Commissioner Shoneman? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, we now uh, are on to the minutes of the meeting of September 24th. Uh, Commissioner Shoneman. All right. I move to approve the minutes of the Board of Public Works meeting of September 24th, 2020. Any discussion? Could you please call the roll? Mayor Dantes? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Commissioner Shoneman? Yes. Motion passes. Now on to public comment. Is there any member of the public who would like to speak to the committee, to the commission, or the board? If not, we'll go to street department item A, Commissioner Tees. Yes, thank you. Um, for informational purposes, I'd like to, I don't really know how to remember how to uh, present this, but uh, informational purchase replacement for one 2019 Ford F-350 pickup vehicle ID number 638 from fiscal year 2021 capital equipment reserve fund surf. So we have, is Mr. Ibarra here? Or maybe- uh, Yes, I am, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Uh, John, would you like, uh, Carolyn O'Connor is on the line and our, our financial administration manager, would you like her to, to speak to this? She might. I don't mind taking a stab at it in uh, Nick's absence since he retired, uh, but if okay. Carolyn okay. wants to chime in with any additional, that'd be great. Well, so just, uh, we just need it, would like, it would be helpful to have a brief explanation as to the a reason for the informational item. Sure, happy to do it, Mayor, thank you. Good evening, everybody. So this vehicle is a park and rec truck that uh, was involved in an accident and as luck would have it, less than a year old, but totaled. So we're going through this program to replace the vehicle and uh, risk will be reimbursing after the insurance claim has been settled. Any All other right. questions? Any questions from anyone? Comments? If, if, if I, if I may. Um, so, will they let us know once we know the difference? Obviously, the first year you own a, a new vehicle. I, I don't get new vehicles very often, but the first year you own a new vehicle is when you really take a hit, as far as what um, the vehicle is worth. So. Will we be let know once once we know how much we got that the, the truck was totaled? Will we know the difference between how much how much we got um, for the the vehicle that was totaled, and then what was the difference between the new vehicle that we have here? Yeah, at at the end of the deal, we'll know the difference, and we can provide that information to you at a later date. I'm not okay, privy I'm not to any of the numbers that. now. I, I can provide. Um, we receive the actual cash value, which will be thirty-five thousand one fifty-seven. Okay. Thank you, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. All right. So, all right. So I'm trying to look because in okay in the informational it doesn't give a number. So you said thirty-five. So the amount we got was thirty-five. What? Thirty-five thousand one hundred and fifty-seven dollars. That's the actual cash value. Okay. And um because it doesn't have it in here. So and how much do we have to pay for the new one? 
The new truck through MHQ, the state bid was $39,060. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Yeah, we did okay with the depreciation on that. But, I mean, they got about six months of service out of this truck before it got totaled. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's much less of a hit than I thought. That's terrific. Thank you guys so much, both You're of welcome. you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions regarding this item? If not, we'll go to item B, Commissioner Shonen. Mm -hmm. I move to approve the purchase of winter robe salt from Granite State Materials of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and Eastern Minerals Incorporated of Chelsea, Mass. In the amount of $455,000. Funding will be through Department 161 Street, Fund General, Account Classification 61, Supplies and Materials. Uh, Mr. Ibarra? Yes, Mr. Mayor. So this is our annual purchase of winter road salt. It's a budgeted item, the 455,000. And we are riding on the state bid, which is the lowest bid at 49.50 a ton for the salt. I can't believe the summer went by this fast, but here we are again. That's unbelievable, yeah. Yep. Mm. Any questions? Could you please call the roll? Mayor Donches? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Mr. Schoenman? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. We have the wastewater department. Mr. Boucher is here. Uh, item A, Commissioner Tees. Yes, I move to approve amendment three in the amount of $158,400 to extend the contract for three years with low assessment of Auburn, New Hampshire for the combined sewer overflow monitoring program. Funding will be through Department 169 Wastewater Fund Wastewater Account Classification 53 Professional Services. Discussion. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Boucher. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, Flow Assessment is a company we use. Uh, they monitor our combined sewer overflows and uh, they also monitor three rain gauges throughout the city. They have their equipment set up in manholes. And uh, we've used them since 2018, uh, even pre-2015. Uh, we're happy with their services. We've been using them annually, uh, but by uh, going into this three-year contract is savings uh, of close to $10,000. We'd like to continue their services. Uh, we utilize all the data collected for reporting to the regulatory agencies at the end of the month. I'll take any questions. Any questions or comments? Um, I would just say that was that was a very good um, explanation. So just uh, um, just for for folks who who might be watching or listening. So the so so that happens when we have we have rainstorms where we um, where where the um, sewer treatment facility can't handle all, can't handle everything all at once is that correct oh uh, it's when there's a like a torrential rainfall and right. maybe one of the sewer pipes gets overwhelmed right uh, happen it would it would yeah. die through a cso site correct right and and it's it's and we're re, we're required to do it and it uh, my guess is it sounds like you're very pleased with these folks and that there probably aren't a lot of people you can go to for this service anyway. That's correct. Uh, any issues we've had with any equipment, we call them. They're very responsive, uh, and we're satisfied with the reports that we've been receiving. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or discussion? Could you please call the roll? Mayor Donches? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Commissioner Shoneman? Yes. Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Shoneman. I move to approve the rebuild of a raw water pump by First Electric Motor Services Incorporated of Woburn, Mass, in the amount of $27,530.
Funding will be through the depart through Department 169 Wastewater Fund Wastewater Account Classification 54 Property Services. Does anyone want to be recognized on this? Yes, Mayor, I, I can speak towards this. Okay. Uh, so this, this pump is in our wet weather facility. We have a series of four pumps. Uh, this is one of them. They're very large pumps. Uh, three at a time have to push through 60 million gallons. Uh, currently, uh, one of them is not working. We send pumps out to this, this company, uh, First Electric. We, we utilize their service quite a bit on smaller pumps. Uh, unfortunately, th this is a very large pump. Uh, so what they do is they take in the pump, they assess it to see if we can rebuild it or if we have to buy a new pump. Uh, so this, actually it's the motor part of the pump. So the motor can be rebuilt at a lesser cost than purchasing a whole brand new one. Uh, so this is beneficial to us. This company has serviced us well in the past. We'd like to utilize their service. They have the pump already. It's taken apart. They have to do that to, to investigate. So it makes sense to utilize them to finish the rebuild on it. Anybody okay. wanna be recognized for question or comment? Um, yes, please. Uh, Commissioner Sorry, I just wanted to um, get a ballpark figure. How much does a new one of these cost? Uh, typically when you buy the pump and motor, you're looking at 114,000. Roughly, that's what we estimate. Mm. They're, they're that's a considerable not savings. Significantly uh, cost savings. And we look at the age of the pump as well. And the pump isn't that old. It's just that the nature of the environment it's in, they tend to, you know, uh, they, can, they can go with little reason just from the corrosiveness of the environment. Uh, Commissioner Pappas, did you have a question? Um, just one quick question. Did, did they, um, do we, is there any kind of a warranty at all or did they, or sense as to how long this fix may last? Uh, yeah, typically they come with a one year uh, limited warranty okay. on their manufactured work. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Could you please call the roll? Mayor Donches? Yes. Mr. Tees? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Shoneman? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Engineering Department, item A, Commissioner Tees. Yes, I move to approve the residential and commercial wastewater service permits and fees as submitted. Any discussion on, any questions, discussion? Could you please call the roll? Mayor Donches? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Commissioner Shoneman? Yep. Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Shoneman. I move to approve a drain layers license for George DeFresne of West Townsend, Mass, in accordance with National City Code 255-19, issuance of drain layers license. Uh, Mr. Hudson is here, city engineer. Sure, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we received uh, an application from George uh, Dufresne and um, we reviewed it. Everything seems to be in order. Deputy Director uh, Pico Harami, he, uh, he called references and they all checked out uh, well. So. We recommend this. Any comments, questions? Anybody want to be recognized? Could you please call the roll? Mayor Dantes? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Shoneman? Yes. Motion passes. Item C is an informational item. Uh, I does anybody have any questions or comments about item C? If not, we'll move on to item D, which is an informational item regarding the Heritage Rail Trail East project. 
Now, I believe that Julie Chismas is here. And I am. she's a member of the planning department. And I assume you're here in order to uh, provide an update on this project. Yes. Um, so thank you for your time this evening, uh, Mayor and Board. Uh, we are approaching the end of our engineering study phase of this project. This project is to construct the Heritage Rail Trail East, um, basically from where the Heritage Rail Trail West ends at um, City Hall at Main Street and go easterly to uh, around Denton Street. It'll run along uh, East Hollis Street, parallel to East Hollis Street, um, and then go behind Henry Hanger and terminate at Denton Street. Uh, we are at the phase of the engineering study where we um, want to present our findings to our various boards. Um, this is informational. We had a proposed action meeting, a virtual public proposed action meeting in September on the 22nd, where we presented uh, preferred alternatives to the public or proposed actions rather. Um, and in general, we aren't really proposing anything uh, over, <laughs> over what we can barely afford as it is. We are building a basic rail trail um, and the only additional things that we are proposing at this time due to the budget restrictions are enhanced crossings uh, at two locations that see a fair amount of traffic. Um, the budget currently is, uh, the estimate is over budget by about $280,000. We are working with DOT to um, establish additional funding for this project. Our initial conversation went really well, and uh, it looks like we will be able to get the extra funding. And could you uh, fill people in on what type of grant this is that we did? Sure. This is a congestion mitigation and air quality grant that we were awarded in 2017. Um, we have been able to build the Heritage Rail Trail East through uh, or the whole Heritage Rail Trail, rather, through a series of grants starting in the 1990s um, through a, a variety of federal grants. This is one of those. So it is a 80 percent federal and 20 percent local match required. Um, we received an award. Um, for $1,144,894. Um, actually, I, I should take that back. We received an award for uh, slightly less than that. We had to go in for an amendment um, for $9,000. Uh, our original award was $1,135,698. Um, but due to the urban nature of this trail, the survey work took a little uh, additional Additional effort and so we did go for an amendment and so the additional funding that we need to complete construction will be another amendment that we are seeking. Anybody have questions or about this informational item? I have a couple of questions. Commissioner Shoneman. Um, I'm re I read that um, the first phase, the Rail Trail West was completed in 1999. Was it planned for the same reason as the rail trail east to east traffic and, and that sort of thing? Yes. Yes, it was. Has it done that? Um, I think it has. I mean, I can't speak for the east all section. Obviously, we haven't built that yet. Um, but we do see a lot of, of pedestrian and bicycle traffic on the Heritage Rail Trail. Um, Honestly, I haven't uh, evaluated, you know, traffic counts from from then and applied growth rates to determine, you know, if we're where we where we are. But we certainly do see quite a bit of, of non motorized traffic on the existing rail trail and in, into the connections that it makes into Mine Falls Park. Since I walk it quite a bit, and um, I would say nearly everyone who's walking parallel to Hollis Street uses the rail trail as opposed to the sidewalk on uh, on Hollis Street. Yes. Uh, the sidewalk is close to the street, fairly narrow. Uh, the rail trail is generally a much better place to walk or ride your bike. <coughs> so that's my personal observation. No. And this, this will be a multi-use trail, so it'll be adequate width to accommodate both pedestrians and bicyclists and those in motorized um, devices, mobility devices. Okay. Any other questions, comments for Ms. Chismas? Um, I have I have just um, a, a quick question, and yeah. then after and then afterwards, I have an unrelated question for um, Mr. Hudson. So I'm just curious when when you did your presentation, did um, did you seem to get much community input from the neighborhood or? 
So when we did our initial presentation last year in 2019, before, before everything got shut down, that was in October of 2019, and we did have quite a few people from the neighborhood come to City Hall. We actually went out ahead of that um, and spoke to the businesses along that abut the trail, and then it did a, a flyer that we mailed to about another uh, 70 neighborhood people or people who have also shown interest. Um, so we had pretty good input there on the virtual. We had, I want to say, 18 people participate. Um, and then we did get some email correspondence following following the meeting. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's, if, if there are any other questions or comments regarding the rail trail, let's take those now and then we will go to Commissioner Pappas with a question for Mr. Hudson. Anyone else about the rail trail? If not, let's, uh, Commissioner Pappas. I, I do, I've, I've got a question. I got a call this week. Um, it was, apparently we, we repaved um, Don Logan Road near Northwood Drive. Um, and a person said that the, the road was paved on Monday afternoon and by Friday they had to cut into it for a patch. Um, he thought it was like at least a nine by nine patch. Um, maybe for a um, sewer, I, I, I don't know if it was, a, if it was around a sewer issue, um, but it was, it was a bit of a concern because the thing was open for three weeks, and I was curious why the work wasn't done before rather than cutting to a road that was like five days old. Sure, so I can address that. <clears throat> it's, uh, this was an unfortunate circumstance. It wasn't planned work actually after the paving was completed, a sinkhole opened up. Um, so this was emergency restoration of the sinkhole. Um, so it's, it's uh, you know, it's just one of those things, the timing couldn't have been worse, but, but that's what it was. So we didn't check it, we don't, uh, and, 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 and um, forgive, forgive my ignorance, but, uh, but before we pave a road, do we do we do any kind of a scanning to see if there may be some sort of an issue like that? Um, so yeah, we're doing more and more scanning ahead of paving, but but we've been doing so much paving, it's not possible to check every pipe under every road. Um, I don't know offhand if this pipe had been inspected or not. Sometimes even if you inspect something, it looks okay. You can still have an issue later. So. We do try to be preventative and avoid these situations, but in this case, um, that that didn't happen. We didn't. We, we weren't lucky in this case. This was unfortunate. So, is there something we can do with the pat? Because I, because my understanding is, and this was before you arrived when um, when Ms., when when Engineer Ducrane gave us our. Um, we, we had we had a um, we had a we had a teaching session um, on. Um, road patches and that and that sort of thing and in, in relation to paving so if it was a nine by nine patch is there something we can do to make the patch better since clearly it was done on a new road and my understanding is like the first year and obviously probably the first week once you cut into a brand new road that's it's kind of compromised so I wasn't sure if there was something different um, that we might be able to do on this patch yeah, I'll need to discuss that with uh, our paving engineer to see, you know, what's been done or what can be done. Sometimes when pavement's fairly new, you can you use infrared to kind of reheat the pavement and uh, and uh, reseal it. Um, you know, if it's a newer pavement, that doesn't work. Obviously, if it's an older, hardened, fully hardened pavement, so um, it's something that we will uh, look into and do, make the best patch we can. Can can we can we be updated on that next month? Sure. Okay, awesome, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions, comments from Mr. Hudson? Administration, we have two informational items. Uh, the, and I assume uh, Director Photo is gonna do this, uh, the DPW facility update and the director's report, of course. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we do not have any updates on the DPW facility. Uh, we do keep that on the agenda every month. Um, so we, I'll update you. Um, nothing has uh, transpired in the last month, although 
hopefully um, I will have some activity to report to you for, for next month. And uh, Diane, could you pull up uh, the director's report, please? The first slot, next slide. Okay, um, this is a water street sewer construction. Uh, we installed a new pipe. Um, SUR West did the work uh, along Water Street under the bridge as part of our 2020 sewer reconstruction. This is a picture of um, roots were removed from a 24 inch sewer pipe um, by Kenyon Pipeline. Uh, which highlights the importance of routine pipe cleaning and maintenance. This and we have been million. doing that, correct? We, we, well, we, we, we are starting to, yes. I mean, right, there's that, a, that's, what, that's, of, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yes, Commissioner Pappas, you're right. We have started a program to do that, yes. Um, this is pavement milling on Cabot Drive as part of our 2020 paving program. This is all and some thermoplastic markings being applied uh, by Marking Zinc as part of our paving program. This is wearing course pavement on Hooker Street, on uh, being compacted on Hooker Street. And uh, the picture that you're seeing um, actually is uh, final paving. We, uh, we were very honored. Uh, the city received the Gold Leaf Award for our, our outstanding efforts promoting Arbor Day each year uh, by the International Society of Arboriculture. So that, that was a really neat award and you can see all of us uh, in the picture of social distancing. We've done some significant Lincoln Park renovations. If you haven't seen it, um, you, should, you should definitely go down. The playground area has been completed. It's really nice. Um, there's another uh, slide a little later on that shows the street department. So it, you can see the wall around the playground. The street department actually built that. It, it's, it's really beautiful. It, it came out really nice. We're very happy with it. And we're currently working on paving the parking lot and walk areas now. Uh, these, this is our park and rec crews installing a new flagpole at the Veterans Memorial uh, near Railroad Square. Uh, this is a picture of our park and rec crews disinfecting the Sellers Stadium turf between events. We are in full swing for with fall cleanup. On the left is leaf removal at Greeley Park, and on the right is field aeration at Maine Dunstable Fields. Uh, due to COVID, we were not able to have our, our regular fright night. So um, Kelly um, and Jeff over in our recreation. Uh, department came up with the, an idea of showing a movie at Greeley Park. Um, and so the, they're going to be showing that on uh, Friday, October 30th uh, in the, in the uh, band shell. The movie will start at dusk and um, it's the Adams family. And the event we have um, uh, different, uh, we, we've marked out spots and um, each family will have their own spot. And of course, uh, socially distancing. And uh, when we, reservations were required and when we advertised it, the event filled up in six hours. So it's very popular and we are going to be looking at, it, it's obviously gonna get too cold, but we're gonna be looking at having uh, more movie nights uh, as soon as we can um, in the spring, because this seems to be something that, that is very popular and something that we can, we can do safely and provide some entertainment for families. The 50th annual June Karen Senior Outing is coming up. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't have a traditional luncheon. So we came up with the idea of having a three course lunch to go. So we're gonna be having um, sort of a drive through for Tellos will be providing the meals. And we are, so um, we have, uh, we signups actually start tomorrow. We'll, we'll be advertising it. So seniors can, can sign up for this. And uh, they'll be picking up uh, at Stella Stadium between 11 and, and 1230. 
in uh, on Sunday, November 22nd. And uh, we're very excited about this. We think this will be, it's a special year. It's the 50th. And we were really disappointed that we couldn't have, we had some special things planned and we were really disappointed that we couldn't have it, uh, a traditional uh, sit down dinner. But we think this is a, a, a nice um, alternative. And we also will have some raffle prizes that we'll be raffling up and giving giving um, to the folks uh, when they pick, come pick up their dinners. So um, I, I think this will this will be popular, and we hope folks enjoy it. This is just a picture of our send off to Nick on Friday, September twenty fifth, and uh, I think he had a he had a great party and enjoyed it very much. I did receive uh, a thank you note from Nick um, and it's, and I'm just gonna read it to you if that's okay. Um, Dear BPW commissioners, thank you so much for your kind words, my gift and for coming to my party. All my best, Nick. So he, I have heard from Nick since he left. He told, it was funny when he left, he told me that he probably, we probably wouldn't hear from him for about three months cause he just needed to, you know, um, you know, you break away for a little while and, and, and decompress. And I have heard from him since and he is enjoying his new job. He said it's far less stressful, so um, good for him, and we wish him well. This, this again, this is the picture that I was mentioning of the street department building the wall around the uh, playground at Lincoln Park. Berm repairs are going on, are ongoing citywide. This is a berm installation on Shelley Drive and Topsfield Street. Uh, these both were installed to uh, alleviate a, a water runoff issue. As part of the paving program um, on Birch Hill Drive, we installed some new sidewalk. The street department worked with engineering to keep the project cost down and streets crews paved the sidewalk. We had an issue at Maine Dunstable, Maine Dunstable School. Um, there was a cross, uh, tip down in a crosswalk that was, that was hazardous and we uh, formed and poured a new crosswalk and tipped down at the main entrance to the school. There, uh, this is a sinkhole on the intersection of Block and Lucier Street. The sinkhole was due to a failure with the bricks uh, in a brick built catch basin. This is uh, another example of some sidewalk, sidewalk work we've done. This was done by street department crews on 52 Cortland Street, about 100 feet of sidewalk. And our wet weather facility is un undergoing an upgrade to include new screens and rakes at the head of the facility. Um, this is gonna allow the facility's full capacity to be utilized, which we haven't been able to yet. So we're really looking forward to that installation. Our, we are approaching the final completion on phase one of the pump station upgrades. On the left is the finished pump station at National Street, which is just awaiting final paving. And on the right is the finished pump station at Trestlebrook. The primary upgrade uh, required uh, an upgrade to our plant water system. The plant water is used in many of the processes to reduce the demand on city water. This work is the installation of replacement valves and flow meter. Uh, this is one of our new trailers for employee use at the landfill. Uh, the new trailer has arrived, it has been set up, and you can see um, we have some plexiglass and it, it's helping us to uh, with uh, COVID best practices. We will have extended hours for soft yard waste um, starting this week. The landfill will be open from 8 to 4 p.m. on Saturdays through November 28th for residents to drop off soft yard waste. Starting this weekend? Starting this Saturday, yes, Commissioner Pathos. Okay, all right, thank you. Sorry to interrupt, but You're thank welcome. you. No, no problem. The last household, household hazardous waste collection for 2020 is scheduled for November 7th from eight to noon, and will be at the park and ride at 25 Crown Street, right here in Nashua. The Four Hills landfill will be closed on Tuesday, November 3rd due to the presidential election. Curbside pickups uh, will be delayed by one day for that week as a result. The same with um, the Four Hills Landfill will also be closed on Wednesday, November 11th for Veterans Day and curbside pickup will also be delayed a day uh, that week 
as well. And but, we'll but also. The, be but the, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt, but just I just want to clarify so that so 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 it's it's Tuesday, November third is when it's closed. But the folks who have the trash out for regular Mondays will put the trash out on Mondays. That's correct, Commissioner Pappas. Okay. So yeah, again, so, sorry to interrupt. Okay. No, no, that's fine. I, I can clear. I can clarify that. So Monday's trash that week will be as scheduled. Tuesday there will be no trash pickup. So Tuesday's trash will be picked up Wednesday. Right. Wednesday's trash will be picked up Thursday. Thursday's trash will be picked up Friday, and Friday's trash will be picked up Saturday. Yes. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Because it's just sure. it's an odd it's an odd week. Just so that folks are aware. Thank you. It it is an it is an odd week, and that is a city hall holiday as well. Not just um, not just for solid waste. So everybody's aware. Okay. The and then Veterans Day is the same thing. Um, it's on Wednesday, November 11th, and so Monday and Tuesday trash will be normal. Wednesday trash will be picked up Thursday, Thursday, Friday, and then Friday, Saturday. So, and uh, the Four Hills landfill will also be closed on Thursday. And all these closings on a Thursday, November 26th for Thanksgiving and uh, track, but we will be picking up trash on Friday. So Thursday's trash will be picked up Friday and Friday's trash will be picked up on Saturday. Okay, and that's it. Any uh, questions? So I guess we can, Mayor, if you want to go to commissioner's comments. Why don't we talk about the main, the main street igloos? That's okay. Can you, you want to do it or you want me to? You want, you want me to talk a little bit about it? Sure, I'm happy to. So um, as you know, restaurants have, have really struggled uh, this past year and the expansion of the outdoor dining has, has helped them enormously. They've all um, chimed in and been very appreciative and thankful of that. I think it, we, that doing that has, may have saved some of, some of them. So we're coming into a tough, really tough season now with winter um, upon us. And uh, now, you know, outdoor dining is, is it's getting colder and, and people are having to come inside. And so restaurants are very concerned about uh, what, what the winter is going to bring. So um, the, um, the mayor and uh, Tim Cummings, our economic development director, um, found um, these um, igloos. And also, I think we have a business mayor that also that has purchased them and has approached us and asked them, asked yeah. us to use them. One and of the, so one of, the, uh, one of the businesses would, you know, has, as you said, has, 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 has some would like so, to out front. Right. So uh, what what we are thinking uh, about doing and, and this is sort of fresh off, hot off the press, but November, outdoor dining ends November 15th. So we are trying to work out a plan whereby we can, we can extend that. Uh, and uh, these igloos are, are really pretty cool looking. They, they look at just, they're sort of like a geodorm dome structure and they look like an igloo. And it, you know, it would only be like four to six people. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, restaurant owners would have to clean up uh, clean the snow around them and, and take responsibility for that. Um, and we'd have to, of course, make sure that there, there was ADA compliance was maintained. And, um, but this would be an opportunity to be, and of course they need to get all the necessary approvals from the building department and the fire marshal and all that, that, that hasn't been completed yet. But we are working right now on trying to come up with a, with a plan whereby we might extend that outdoor dining date from November 15th to um, through maybe maybe through the winter. So um, we're trying to think of creative ways to help our, our local businesses. Be, otherwise, I think it will be a very, very difficult winter for them. So that's, I don't know, Mayor, if you want to add to that, but. Now these were, the barriers are going to be taken down uh, in, the, yes. in mid-November so that we can plow the street. But these, uh, if this were to go forward, it would be on the sidewalk in front of, uh, a restaurant or restaurants who wanted to participate as long as all these conditions are met. Any commissioners have any thoughts? Um, if, if, if I may? Yes, please. Um, I, I, I think 
we didn't have a choice but but to but to put up but to put up the barriers because of covid and obviously you don't want businesses to you know to, to go under um and i know there was talk about doing it permanently and um for me i think that we also have to think in terms of people have to get downtown to the hospital and that and that sort of thing so even maybe one more season um that we might be able to help out the restaurants before we do some sort of a traffic study. Um, but is I, I just want to make sure that we're able to properly plow Main Street so that people can get to, you know, in, in addition to downtown restaurants, we have people that have to get to the hospital and their doctor's offices and other other businesses on Main Street. So that would, I mean, just my, my concern would be that you know, during the winter, the traffic would be able to um, successfully get through downtown. And, you know, if we can figure the sidewalks out, that that would be, you know, that that would be one thing. But my, my concern would be just not putting those items too close to the edge of the sidewalk in case, some, you know, they're slipping and sliding or that sort of thing. So, you know, I, I, I don't know who would be managing um, figuring out the safety. I don't know if it's going to be risk management, um, but you know, that, that would, that would just be, that would be my concern. So uh, I agree with you, Commissioner Pappas about plowing. Um, I, I, that was a concern of mine. That's why um, as the mayor mentioned, we will be picking up all of the barriers. So there won't be any barriers left on main street for the winter. So all these um, uh, igloos will be, solely on the sidewalks. So we, we won't have to worry about um, being able to plow and, and uh, pe you know, having people get clearing snow and, and also having people able to, to get through. And, and, and another, we were, we, another concern we had was the ADA compliance and making sure that we maintain that because that's very important. And uh, we will um, make sure that that happens. Uh, t uh, parking is responsible for clearing the sidewalks, and I think they were actually looking at that today in terms of 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 how we how we're going to do that because there are some obstacles. There are there are planting beds and there are poles and parking stations, and th all of those things will be taken into account. So we we maintain um, that that ADA compliance. And I and I did have just uh, interesting that you were talking about slipping, Commissioner Pappas, because I. I spoke with um, the manager of risk today, Jen Deshaies, because that was something mm -hmm. that we had thought of as well. And, and apparently we, the city does not have, um, we're immune from liability from folks slipping on sidewalks, interestingly enough. So um, we, you know, the, we're, we're, we would require restaurants to make sure that they're taking care of the sidewalk we're in front of them, their, their uh, business, especially if they're going to have these um, igloos. So they'll be responsible for, for salting uh, the side, salting and sanding the sidewalk and in clearing all of the snow. Okay. And making um, sure that that ADA uh, is, is maintained. Cause I, I was just thinking in terms of, if we don't have the, um, in, you know, uh, uh, well, I, I, I guess if, if they're right at the edge of the sidewalk, I'm just thinking in terms of um, cars slipping or sliding. I, I, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if they had planned. I don't know when, when wh whoever's in charge of figuring out what snow has to be moved. But if you, if you move, if you move the snow bank from the edge of the sidewalk, um, you know, just, just, I, I, I really hope that there's, a decent amount of space between the igloos and where cars park. That's yeah. Safety is my, my main concern. Now, so I and, think, you know, I think the ADA requires five feet of passage. So okay. A clear path. Okay. By with a five feet. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Commissioner. <laughs> um, I'm very glad that this topic was brought up. It's been at the forefront of my mind for a while as the cold weather is coming upon us. And I'm glad that um, we were forward thinking and looking to help uh, these businesses downtown. I'm very pro-business and I have complete confidence in City Hall and the professionals there and in instituting this properly 
so it's done right and safe. Thank you. Any other, any other thoughts? All right. Well, thank you, um, Director Photo. Now we have commissioners' comments. Does any do any of the commissioners have comments? Mayor, we. I'm sorry. Excuse me. We we may want to ask. Um, we if we're going to provide an extension, we may need um, approval by the uh, Board of Public Works in order to to do so. So I don't know if we wanted to I'd take that up or that. or take that up at another time. I'd gladly make that motion proactively. All right, the motion by Commissioner Tees is to authorize the extension as long as I assume building department, fire department. All the approvals uh, are met. Approvals are obtained and the ADA um, five foot passage is also maintained. Thank you. They can only be set up in a way that would 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 uh, make sure that that occurs. I, I wanted to mention one other thing too. This is no, at no cost to the city. The um, the restaurant owners would be buying their own um, igloo, so it, this wouldn't cost the city anything either. I didn't mention that. All right. Any any discussion? Um, I guess my question would be an extension of the. I, I guess I don't understand why we need if if they don't need to have the barriers up, why we're extending the the barrier time. Well, we, we wouldn't be be extending the barrier time. That would not be extended. So the you would be just the um, uh, encumbrance of the sidewalk is what you're yeah. for outdoor dining. Okay. Yes. Um, the right. Barriers are not going to be extended beyond November, mid November. Okay. I, I would feel more comfortable. I, I, I will tell you that I would feel more comfortable with, with more information kind of getting it last minute, but that's me. Um, so anyway, th th those are, those are, my I would just, I would, I would, I would like a little bit more information, a little bit more time to think about it because it was, it was not even on our agenda. So that would be the reason why I would hesitate. The 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 only concern is Commissioner Papp is that Nova we our next meeting is not before November fifteenth, so um, it would just it would there would be a lull in what that in, in what restaurants could do that that would be the only concern about waiting and and that you're right this did come up very quickly in fact I we just had um, a meeting this week about trying to uh, figure something because we've had we've had. Uh, Businesses ask us um, for help because they're worried about about the winter. So um, this it it it's it's coming to you quickly. Um, I understand it, but it and it did I think to us as well. If, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor. Yeah. So yeah, we've been requested to you know take a look at this, and uh, I think I, we might have discussed this yesterday. It was either yesterday or the day before in terms of how this might be accomplished, although. Although uh, the building department has been looking at, uh, you know, what specifications they would require as far as snow load, uh, but in terms of uh, an actual discussion involving, you know, the, all the parties, it really wasn't until this week, maybe yesterday or the day before. Well, there is a motion. Um, any other discussion? Could the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Dantas? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? No. Commissioner Schoenman? Yes. Motion passes. Um, we now have, is it, well, are there any other commissioners' comments? I, I'm not even sure we, we did commissioners' comments. So, commissioners' comments? Someone else wants to go. Go ahead. Does anybody have comments? Um, Pappas, it looks like you're you're up. You're up. Yeah, if I if I may, um, and I can, Mr. Mayor, I can send you a picture. This has been um, something that people have asked me about for almost two years. Um, technically, it doesn't involve public works, and I know I had gone through. 
um, Nick Caggiano, he, um, I gave him an intersection that had a, I thought was a bad site issue. And um, I had like maybe three complaints about it, actually four complaints about it. You know, I drive through and I see if the, I think that it's a site issue. I had my husband do it and um, he also thought that it was a site issue. So I just wasn't sure if you'd be willing to, to drive there yourself. And I have a picture on my cell phone I can send you. On Chester Street heading north at East Stark, um, if, if there, there, there's a stop sign and there's a big evergreen bush and in order to, to, you can see clearly to the left, but in order to look to the right, before you can see if there's oncoming traffic, you're essentially in the middle of, you're essentially in the middle of the intersection. And um, I think Nick Caggiano had passed the concern on to code enforcement. And I think I followed up like maybe three or four times. Um, but I just, I just wanted, I just wanted to, um, yeah, to get that to, out there, so I, so and, and I, I'll, I'll send I'll send I'll send you the picture also. So I appreciate you taking a look at that. Thank you. So now, just so I have it's so it's uh, um, Chester and East Stark, and it is the south. Is that what yes? You're, if you're he, if you're heading if you're heading north, and I'll send you a picture. I've got I've got like a ser I've got a series of pictures actually my husband took for me um, at that intersection. So I'll so I'll I'll text those to you if that's okay. Sure, let me okay, of course. And the director will also take a look if she I I have many I have many times, Mayor. I'm I am very familiar with this. There there are evergreen um shrubs and um code enforcement does require them to cut them back, but they stop short of of requiring them uh to uh, these are very mature shrubs that would, would need to I think uh be uh, I, I think what is being requested is that they be removed because I think they've been come back significantly. Uh, um, but um, I, I have looked at it. Um, All right. Well, I will. I will definitely look at it. Yeah. Because if, if 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 I may, Mr. Mayor, I think I think there might have been confusion with code enforcement because they are kind of on the sidewalk, and I think the objection to people isn't that they kind of extend to the sidewalk. It's just more if you're in a car that you're out, you actually have to be out almost in the, really in the middle of the intersection before you can see who is coming. But I, I'm sorry to bother you on this commissioner comments issue, but you, you know, I, I, I feel badly because a kid, the, you know, the, the, the reason, the reason I first sent, sent the, uh, sent the emails that someone almost got hit on a bike. So that was, that was that was why that I was kind of concerned about it, and that's why I'm following up on it. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Well, on to personnel. Um, item A, Commissioner Shoneman. Move to approve to accept the resignation of Ronald Couturier. Truck driver, effective September 26, 2020. Any discussion? Could you please call the roll? Mayor Donches? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Commissioner Shoneman? Yes. Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Tees. Move to accept the resignation of Eric Christensen, Groundsman 1, effective October 12, 2020. Um, any discussion? Could you call the roll, please? Mayor Donches? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Commissioner Shoneman? Yes. Motion passes. Item C, Commissioner Shoneman. Uh, move to accept the resignation of Patrick Chamberlain, truck driver, effective October 30th, 2020. Discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Mayor Donches? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Mr. Shoneman? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, there is no non public. Um, and uh, 
Therefore, I turn Mayor, to- Mayor, I'm yeah. sorry, Mayor, we do have one person, we do have one personnel. Well, we did, um, beyond those three? That would, yeah, yes, there's a hire, there's a, a new hire. Well, does someone have a motion to go into non-public then? Do, do you want to handle this in non-public or not? If the commissioners are okay with doing that, that's what I would suggest. In what, non-public or public? Public, oh, okay. if that's okay. All right, unless unless one of the commissioners objects. Does anybody object okay. to handling this hiring uh, in open public session? Not as long no. as the the person who's applying or accepting the job is is, is, is that as long as they don't have a problem with it, I have no problem. All right, Commissioner, or excuse me, Ms. Photo. So, uh, would somebody like to read the, uh, maybe one of the commissioners could read the motion? Move to approve the selection contingent upon the acceptable results of criminal and driving records checks of Mr. Colin Sullivan of Lowell, Massachusetts for the position of assistant construction engineer in the engineering department. Starting salary is $58,708 a year. Funding for this position will be through Department 169 Wastewater Fund Wastewater. Account classification 51 salaries and wages. Any St comments? Uh, Dan, since you're still on, do you want to? You, I'll let you speak too. Sure, thank you. This is a, this is a vacant position that we are excited to have and what we consider an excellent candidate to fill. Um, Colin is uh, uh, a nice young young man. Um, we've interviewed him. Uh, Lisa interviewed him, and um, he has. Uh, although he only has about five years' experience, he has excellent experience in uh, managing and administering construction efforts. So um, we feel he's a good candidate, and um, look forward forward to uh, adding him to the team. Anybody have comments? Could you please call the roll? Mayor Donches? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Commissioner Schoenman? Yes. Motion passes. Looks like we've reached the end of the agenda. Uh, Commissioner Tees, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move, Mr. Mayor. Could you please call the roll? Mayor Donches? Yes. Commissioner Tees? Yes, please. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Commissioner Schoenemann? Yes. All right, the meeting is adjourned at 6.33 p.m. I hope everybody has a good evening.